the castle of Rivia now loomed before the Lyrians. Water surrounded it on three sides, and dual defensive walls studded with podgy turrets completed its perimeter. It was famously difficult to take, and had changed hands only once. A few months before, when traitors opened its gates to the Nilfgaardians, foreign banners waved upon the walls. The Golden Sun and General Epdahi's crest on Rivia's walls. The walls of home. There was somber silence among the troops, the glee and pride of many triumphs suddenly gone. For each knew if the Queen ordered an assault, most would lie dead by sunrise. Your Majesty, began Reynard in a reassuring tone. We needn't strike quickly, we've time on our side. To prepare would be wise. Two months, I wager, perfectly enough. We stop supplies from getting through. They'll capitulate, I've little doubt. Or at worst, be too weak to defend the fortress. Reynard's reasoning was sound. There was no need for urgency. Meave had the upper hand for the first time in this war. Let Epdahi wait, said Meave, her eyes trained on the citadel. Let him watch from those walls as we reclaim our realm, village by village, town by town. Follow me. Meave turned her back to the castle, eager to take the fight elsewhere. Meave had returned to the foot of Rivia Castle. Tense and silent, her troops awaited her command. These invaders have grown fond of Rivia Castle, said Meave. So let them stay and rot. Reynard, erect road barricades and guard posts between city and citadel. Gascon, seize all boats, barges, anything that floats. Stop anything from entering from the lake. Move! Soon, Rivia Castle stood isolated from the world outside its walls. All roads leading to it were blocked, impassable. Fishing boats, a cordon, embraced the fortress on Loch Escalot. The lanterns on their bows glowed like fireflies in summer. Then, an emissary from the castle brought a message for the Queen. General Epdahi wished to meet, face to face, and half the way between the Citadel and the Lyrian camp. Well, well, some general, smirked Gascon. We've barely snapped the trap shut, yet he's already shaking in his knickers. Be on your guard, mother, said Willem. Epdahi, I know better than anyone here. The man always has a trick up his sleeve. We've a few of our own. Sleeves and tricks. But I thank you for the warning and concern. Meave proceeded to the meeting point without delay. A lone rider soon appeared on the horizon. He came adorned in rich black robes, their golden trim shimmering in stray sunbeams. She'd seen him before, in Edern, through the Megascope. You came as I requested. Good. Very good. I couldn't possibly refuse such a courteous invitation, especially as compared to your previous missive. The art of diplomacy, you've improved your grasp. Your realm fell quickly. I expended little strength in seizing it. This left me much time to study. But please, we must set aside this bitterness. I'd like to formally welcome you to Rivia, dear Queen. I see you've readily adopted the role of gracious host in my home. In point of fact, I've grown fond of the castle. Fortifications impressive, atypical of the North. Not so your brave soldiers, whom we shall pick off like ducks. I pity them, in fact. Dry your eyes, General. Rest easy. I have no plans for a quick assault. I shall first wait to hear the rumbling in your bellies. Remarkable. You truly believe you can win this war? I've not been in the North long, but have discovered something all the same. You don't grasp complex ideas. You know Nilfgaard is large, but your minds don't fathom its enormity. You see, for every army you defeat, another will come to take its place. One larger and better equipped than the one before. Even now, as we so pleasantly chat, Army Group East is en route to lift your siege. Due to arrive tomorrow. 
And do you know what will happen when they do? They will crush you against your own castle's walls, like the maddening flea you are. A charming analogy, but get to the point. Why do you ask for this meeting? For this very reason. I wish to see you with my own eyes. They did not see enough in Edern? Are you such an admirer of feminine beauty? Oh, you flatter yourself. No, in you, I see an animal. Game. Prey. And as the hunt's due to start soon, I needed a more detailed image of the beast I'll be looking for. <laughs> you? On a hunt? Those delicate hands have never held spear or bow. Now sharper than a letter opener, I wager. Tomorrow you will not be on a hunt. Tomorrow you will be at war. You best pray to all your gods you don't find me. Without awaiting a response from General Ep Dahi, Meave pivoted and turned toward camp. Her pace was quick, despite a heavy heart. Plow yourself, Nilfgaardian scum. Charming. Is that all you wish to say? I prefer action to words. You'll see for yourself tomorrow. Unlikely. In fact, I doubt you'll reach the walls at all. Pray that I don't. For if I find you midst the fray, I shall strangle you with my bare hands. Without awaiting a response from General Ep Dahi, Meave pivoted and turned toward camp. Her pace was quick, despite a heavy heart. Enough. I'll not be insulted, General, nor intimidated. Then I wish you a splendid night, Majesty. Get some rest. You'll need it tomorrow. Indeed I will. For with raised visor, I shall be at the fore, unlike you. In my home, in the civilized world, a general commands his force. He does not rush and thrash about like some rabbit hound. You're not at home, General. You're in the north, in my home. But you're right. I will rest, while you should pray to all your gods that we don't meet amidst the fray. Without awaiting a response from General Ep Dahi, Meave pivoted and turned toward camp. Her pace was quick, despite a heavy heart. Seems your late husband, rest his soul, may have overcompensated a bit with this castle. Don't have a spare key for the main gate, by any chance. No, thought not. Shame I've not yet finished my glider. Could have flown over the walls. The good book states the just always prevail. We've no cause for despair. The black clads shall shed their shields and flee for the first cock crows. Nilfgaard fights by the sword, thus it shall fall by the sword. As a rule, human fortifications aren't worth a pound of shield marshite. But this fort sure turned out all right for you. Now in hell, got no chance against these walls. Tricks to stay positive, isn't it, your majesty? And I thought Rosberg had strong walls. No turning back now. Victory or death. I'll fight by your side, my lady. To the very last. A hell of a night! Ah! 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 Don't you dare sign the retreat, got it? <laughs> My axe craves blood! Nelf Guardian blood! Let us hope this proves the war to end all wars. Many will die today. Too many. Always darkest before the dawn.